Hello, I'm Clark Zeller. I'm a sales engineer with Live Action. This video is to highlight how you can utilize Live Action for QoS monitoring and validation. Let's take a look at Live Action. On my screen, we're viewing Live Action. To the left of my screen, we're looking at a device that Live Action is managing labeled Data Center. To the right, we're looking at another device labeled Remote Site. Each of these devices is interconnected by a network cloud labeled MPLS WAN. This represents a typical environment we see for many of our customers. A good first step when it comes to QoS monitoring is to understand where is QoS even configured in your environment. There is an audit button built into Live Action, and what this will do is it will quite literally run a QoS audit on all the devices that Live Action is managing. What it's actually doing is it's going out, collecting a copy of the configurations of your devices, then uh, reporting back what devices have QoS policies on them, as well as which interfaces each policy applied to. So at a glance, you can understand where's QoS configured. Another feature of the QoS audit report in live action is that of an issues log where live action will compare your configurations against Cisco best practices and warn you of any QoS configuration problems. So now that we understand where is QoS configured in our environment, we can now use live action to drill down and understand the performance statistics of each QoS policy. We can do this in both real time as well as using live action's historic reports. Now to do this in real time, one way we could look at a policy's performance is I'm going to double click on this data center device. We now see a list of the interfaces that live action is managing. We also see in the policies column that there are policies applied to these interfaces and in what direction. I'm going to click and highlight this policy named queuing and double click on it. I now see this specific interface's QS policy's performance in real time. To the top of the screen, we're visually showing you the in-bar data that's passing through this interface. This is where the Cisco device has done a deep packet inspection and reported back to live action what applications were found and in what volume. And then the bottom half of the screen is a view into the CBQS MIB, or this is an actual view into how this QS policy is performing right now. We can see this in both the table view as well as our bandwidth chart. So not only can we use live action to look at real-time performance statistics, we can also use its historic reporting capabilities and drill down into exactly how any one of the classes or queues in your QS policies is performing. And what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on just one queue. Uh, in this case, it's a video queue, and we're seeing what is the volume of data being sent through this one specific queue. And we can know exactly how has this class or queue been performing. Now, one thing that's extremely important about live action is we will never average or aggregate the data that you send us. So we'll always be able to show you how your QS policies are performing um, just like it was happening in real time. Now, we can do this for the last hour, six hours, day, week, or some custom time interval. So let's say two weeks ago on Tuesday, you want to know exactly how one of the queues of any of your QS policies is performing using live action. You can now understand that. Live Action can also alert and warn you about QoS performance issues. Knows how both devices in my network map are green as well as their interfaces. This indicates that everything is working normally. But I'm going to implement a broken QoS policy on my data center device and I can immediately show you how Live Action will alert and visually warn you about QoS performance issues. So I'm going to right click on the WAN interface of this data center device, go to apply policy to interface, and I'm going to implement a QoS policy that has a traffic shaper in it. This will force drops to occur on this interface. And in just a couple moments when SNMP catches up after this change has been applied, let's see if the performance statistics of this interface are not updated to reflect those drops. Okay, so now that SNMP's caught up, notice how my data center device as well as the WAN interface on that device are amber. This indicates that there are drops actively occurring on my WAN interface. Now, if I wanted to investigate this further, all I would need to do is double click on that WAN interface. Notice how I now have a very smooth bandwidth graph in this interface's statistics. Also notice how 
a couple of the classes or cues in the QS policy on this interface are amber. That indicates a performance problem with these cues. If I was to right click on say this VoIP class or queue, notice how it now has a red line in its real time queue statistics. This indicates it's actively taking drops in the queue. This is definitely a problem for our end users. But what is most important with this tool is I can actually fix this QS policy on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my policy and go to Adjust Output QS. And this is going to show us a summary of the QS policy on this interface and we can actually adjust this policy uh, here in real time. So what I see is a list of the class or the queue names, the queue types, the bandwidth settings. I can also see that there is a traffic shaper in place. And then finally at the bottom of this graph I see a pie chart that will give me a percentage breakdown of how bandwidth is allocated to the various queues. Notice how the very top queue, my VoIP queue, is a priority queue, but it's only been configured with 1% of the bandwidth. This is definitely an issue. I'm going to make that maybe say 20% and notice how the pie graph update appropriately. And now that I've implemented that change, I'm going to save that to the device. Live action just log into the device and push that change for me. I never had to go to the command line to implement that QS change. And while we wait for SNMP to catch up, I'm going to turn your attention to our red alert button. I'm going to double click on our red alert button. And what we now see is a list of all of the real time alerts that live action is generating. These alerts can contain QS warnings regarding things like Q drops. It can also tell you about when either an interface or a queue's bandwidth has crossed a configurable threshold. So when it comes to capacity planning, you can be alerted and notified and have log messages of exactly how are your interfaces and your QS policies performing. Now these alerts and alarms can be sent to you in both email as well as syslog. So truly before your end users complain about performance issues, you can be notified. I'm going to close this for now, and now that SNMP has caught up, notice how our VoIP class or queue is no longer amber. If I right click on it and go to view class statistics, notice how our red line in the queue's real-time bandwidth statistics has gone back to zero, so we can visually tell that we no longer have drops in that queue. But notice how our class default is amber. This indicates that the class default on this specific interfaces QS policy is dropping traffic. This is actually a good thing because this means our high priority voice video as well as critical data is being protected but our best effort data is what is suffering. This is exactly what we want to see with our QS policies. Now live action will give us the ability to tune the alert thresholds so we don't have to be warned about the drops in our class default. Now I've just updated the class default specifically uh, warning so that it is no longer showing those drops in amber and if I come back to my network map notice how now that I've tuned those warning messages as well as fixed the VoIP queues drop issue my network has returned back to green which means it is operating normally. Now everything that's been discussed so far highlights how live action can alert and warn you about QoS performance issues on one specific device. But real networks will have many devices, potentially hundreds or thousands of QoS policies to manage. Well, built into live action is a dashboard that will give you a quick one pane of glass view of where are the top 10 issues in your environment. So at a glance, you can manage your network and understand exactly where are the performance issues you need to focus in on. So what we're looking at is our system dashboard. This is a great place to see the top 10 CPU and memory utilization statistics of the devices in your network environment. You can also see your top 10 interface bandwidth and interface drop measurements. There's also a WAN interface dashboard where at a glance you can understand the capacity and the bandwidth utilization of your WAN interfaces. Live Action also has a QoS specific dashboard and this is a great place where you can see the top 10 class or Q input and output bandwidth measurements as well as the top 10 class input and output drop rates. Now what's powerful about this is at a glance this is a list of the QS policies that are having the most performance problems that you need to address right now. Now each one of the items we see in these lists are things we can right click on and drill down on and 
see the appropriate historic reporting information to understand exactly why did they show up in the top 10 list. In this specific example, I'm showing you a QS policy that is dropping traffic in its voice over IP queue. And we can see at what volume the drop rate occurred. Now remember, since live action never averages or aggregates data, we're seeing this historic information just like it was happening in real time. As well, I can also use the QS dashboard to trend any QS alerts that have been generated by the tool. We can see the alerts by type and focus in on any one of these by just right clicking and show alerts. I've now I'm doing a historic search in our alert repository, and I'm doing this by type. I'm right now looking at the top alert type, which happens to be class drop rate. I can then focus in on any of the specific class drop rate alerts, right click on any one of those alerts, and then run the appropriate historic report for the time period that that alert occurred, and I can understand exactly why did that alert get generated. So utilizing these built-in workflows in live action, it becomes extremely simple to solve QS problems throughout your enterprise. Now the final topic I'd like to discuss is live action's ability to monitor and validate end-to-end QoS policy configurations. And what I mean by that is I'm going to click on our flow tab. We now see multicolored arrows painted across our network map. Live action is very unique in that it has the ability to collect net flow information and in turn paint an end-to-end -end picture of the traffic flowing through your network environment. Now, right now, I'm looking at the multicolored arrows based off of DSCP value. That means each of these colors represents a different QoS priority marking. If I was to select one of these, maybe this red arrow, and create a custom filter where I would just focus in on this one conversation, I can see through my network, based off of my color legend, that the red arrows stand for EF. This means that my phone traffic is being marked as well as honored throughout the network environment, even over this MPLS WAN, as high priority. So at a glance, I'm able to immediately validate these QoS policies. This concludes our discussion of Live Action's ability to monitor as well as validate QoS configurations in your environment. Thank you so much for watching.